Hello everybody, it is me, Bryson P, and today we're going to be looking at how Norway's prisons are different from America's. I am a convicted felon that lives in the United States. Obviously, that's not really a good thing, but here I am. I've turned my life around. I do have an extensive criminal history, even though I've never actually been to prison. I was sentenced to seven years in prison with a minimum of 18 months before I was eligible to go to the parole board. However, um, due to a lot of other extenuating factors, which will be in future videos, I was able to turn that into um, shock probation after 83 days in the felony side of the jail waiting to go and transfer to prison. So, even though I've never been to actual prison, this is interesting to me because I have been close to it and supposed to have been there especially for seven years or well, 18 months minimum so here we go staying in a maximum security prison is not a normal life but that's also an ambition to reduce the feeling of being in a prison as much as possible and in here you have uh, my cell so i have uh, dvd and uh, movies from there the basic question that we ask ourselves yeah, didn't have none of that. Like I said in my previous video about the Sweden versus United States, I slept on the floor for my first two weeks there. It was, uh, I think, t like three weeks, give or take. I'd, I'd have to really do my math on it, but it was around that time, around three weeks, four weeks maybe, give or take, before I seen uh, sunlight for the first time, whenever we got to go outside and have recreation for the very first time during my stay while incarcerated at the county jail waiting to be transferred to prison. Yeah. Um, definitely no DVDs, nothing like that. We did have a TV, so. To Norway. What kind of neighbor do we really want? Uh, because they couldn't move into my neighborhood and they couldn't yep. move into your neighborhood. Yep. So uh, I think this is an important question to ask ourselves. Really. Yeah. That should have an influence on how we work inside prisons. It's not for, for the prison to judge or to punish. We have to interact and be human. So I think it's as simple as that. It is as simple as that. You know, I have a lot of compassion for people. I'm a very compassionate person, and I feel like you guys will really see that in future videos and see that compassionate side of me. A little bit of compassion goes a long way. When you're treated like an animal, and you're treated like an animal every single day, and you're locked in a cage, well, I mean, you start becoming an animal. You start, you know, you start acting the way that you are put in that environment. You know, that's the way that you are experiencing life every single day. <clears throat> if that's the way you experience life every single day, then you're going to adapt to living that way, especially if you already have a criminal mindset and you're already in a, in a mindset of nobody cares about me to begin with or I don't have any really reason to care about you and then you basically spit on me, figuratively speaking. Why, why would I care a single bit? I wouldn't. And I saw that, and I, I completely understand why that happens. Again, this is just in the jail side. I can only imagine in the prison side, ten times worse. most important thing is how we treat people. This is the four key elements that I would like you to remember. The principle of normality, the focus that we have in Norway on humanity inside prisons, what we call dynamic security, and the emphasis that we put on reintegration into society. I would say the main goal of the trip is for inspiration to go bold back in the United States. Let's talk a little bit more about Holden then. How do we work and what are the unique, unique things about us? Mm. 
Okay. World's most humane prison. Let's check it out. Let's see what it is. In here, you have uh, my cell. So I have uh, DVD and uh, movies from there. Here we have a real toilet with a shower and everything. You know, you can see everybody have their key. Yeah, it definitely didn't have a, a real toilet with a shower, especially not privacy like that. Like I said, I shared a, a cell with 32, 33 other people at max at one point. Um, we just all shared everything. You know, we got the bathroom, and at some point, maybe I'll draw a picture. But we had a bathroom that literally the only thing that separated the main living cell where we all lived to the bathroom was a plastic shower curtain. And then inside the bathroom, the only thing that separated the two toilets was just a little bit of brick wall between them. And then the same thing for the shower side. There was two showers, but of course we only used one. I'll possibly explain more why we only used one of the two later on. Anyways, definitely didn't have that. So that privacy is amazing. The privacy is one thing that, you know, just do not have. Uh, so they're going to open uh, or close to their doors whenever they want. Even though it's nice here, it's still not a summer camp. But I would like you to, you know, look be beyond the facilities. It's not the most important thing. So this is the cell. Every cell is uh, similar. And uh, here we have the kitchen, where I uh, used to prepare the food. You can see here, it's inside here. That's a really important principle in Norway, which talks about that taking someone's liberty away and taking them away from their family, away from their community, that in of itself is the punishment. So life inside prisons should look as normal to life in the community as possible. And in here? Now my question is going to be, this is for, say, low-level offenders, uh, people who obviously are not, like, murder, rape, sexual offenses, um... I, w I would assume that this type of prison set up in this type of incarceration style wouldn't be for that because those type of violent offenders, I mean, <clears throat> giving them a lot of freedom, right? So I'm assuming, like I said, this is for low-level offenders. If, if I'm wrong, let me know, but also if I'm right, let me know too, okay? Thank you. You have this uh, washing room? You can uh, wash the clothes and uh, dry it. Staying in a maximum security prison is not a normal life. And I noticed well, hang on. He's saying maximum security prison. Now, again, what is your definition? What is, what is the Norway, Sweden, Denmark, that side of the world? What is what is your definition of maximum security prison? Because also, I have a max. We have a maximum security prison here in Kentucky where I live and it is called the Castle on the Cumberland it is a maximum security prison again I can do a video on that here in the future that is one place where basically if you go there you never leave so is this the type of because I mean again we're talking about they're saying you're saying maximum security prison but also you're talking about rehabilitation for the community so to me, that sounds more like low-level, uh, low-level offenses. Say, like in my case, right? And if that's the case, then I mean, this is amazing. So, um, you see the hot pot right here, right? That hot pot is the one thing that we had in the entire cell. That's it. That is the entire. Well, you probably can't see that because I got it blocked. You're wearing just you're just wearing normal clothes. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, that's allowed. Um, you can wear whatever you want. Um. But that's also an ambition. Hold up, hold up. Just right there. Oh, my bad. Okay, see the hot pot right here. That hot pot is the one thing that we had to share for, like I said, between 28, 29, 30, 31, 32 people. That one hot pot, that's how we had hot water for everybody in the entire cell to make ramen noodles, to make coffee, to make whatever. 
that one single hot pot for everybody. Which, of course, we disassembled it and took the thermostat out of it so that way you could actually boil water and not just have hot water. Because boiled water, of course, is way better. That's against the rules. Just wearing normal clothes. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's allowed. Um, you can wear whatever you want. Um. But that's also an ambition, to reduce the feeling of being in a prison as much as possible. That's you know, the normality principle. How you can normalize the correctional setting for individuals to transition out, bigger challenge in our system, um, but definitely something to think about. The commissary, the stores, where an individual actually gets to go to a real store and pick out commissary items. I think that's a, a good add, adds to the normalization. We think this is the most important part. Dynamic security sounds like a very fancy thing, but it's really just having a normal interpersonal relations between the officers, or all staff really, and the inmates. Yeah. The role of the contact officer is one of the most important aspects of dynamic, secu dynamic security. Very much so. Again, I've said this in my other video, and you can go check it out. It's the one where I compare the American prisons to Sweden, but I talk about it in there where I had a horrible migraine and asked, you know, basically for a sick call, nurse call, whatever you want to call it, and the dude acknowledged me and then walked away never came back anything like that so yeah go check that video out and you'll see what i'm talking about but that that is a mate that is a very important aspect of all of this at least in my at the least in my book as a primary contact officer and every officer had to have two or three inmates that he is the you know the contact officer for that was the ambition from guard to also be a social worker That's really cool. That's really cool. The main subjects at the academy, ethics, psychology, communication technique, criminology, law, human rights. Of course, they do learn self-defense. They do learn extraction techniques. They do learn to work as a team. But that's not, you know, that's not the major components. It's about how do you treat people respectfully. <laughs> my family always think that I just play games because that's why I like very much to play games. So uh, I often play uh, uh, play cards and stuff. I would love to be a correctional officer at this facility. I know it sounds crazy, but the compassion, the empathy, just well, just the way that this is, the way that these people are, whoever whoever these officers are the the aspect of what they're projecting and what they're trying to project is everything that I wanted to project in my career and this was the type of of thought process I had especially working in a in a psychiatric facility and working with psychiatric patients I was trained armed everything else and ready to rumble at any moment it was that compassion side first and de-escalation and what can we do, what can I do as a human being to help you first. You know, that, that's what it's about. That's what it's about. With, uh, with inmates? I know in some states it's, you know, forbidden and will have consequences for you if you interact with inmates as a staff member. Quite the opposite here. We expect uh, and demand an interaction between staff and inmates. It's kind of friendship with someone um, and to see the progress and see the changes that's the best way to job. Yeah. Yes, because again with my psychiatric patients that I dealt with you know it was it was that progress and getting to see the change of whenever they first came in to whenever they left that change in their mindset their mentality or, or their attitude, their actions, all of those things, it's worth it. 
it's worth every bit of it. It's worth the fighting. It's worth the struggle. It's worth that because I know, hey, it's an underlying issue and let's work on that. You know, there's going to be outbursts. We're going to, you know, and, and it's okay. You know, but now when it comes to murder, rape, all those things, we're talking about that. That's completely crossing the line here. We're talking about this type right here and I, I love it. Uh, the contact officer is, for example, sitting down with you and making you a future plan. Huh? So what for um, steps by steps to be, become a free man? From, from day one? Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the officers need to know everything about the system and give advice to the, uh, to the inmates about you know, the future, what steps should they take. Photos of my daughter, big love of my life. I've been here for one and a half year, but I was transferred from a prison in Brazil. You can compare that to come from hell to heaven. So <laughs> it's, it's a big difference. The guards, first of all. Uh, in Brazil, the guards are... Uh, more you feel bad and weakness. Yeah the more they feel good. Here you have the guards, you know, they, they was very kind to me when I came. They are still <laughs> very kind. Um, they see you as a human they, being. You know, they treat me as an, a, a human being. Um, yeah. In, in Brazil, you're... I feel that, animal. you know. I, I, I mean, how can you not I've feel that? I've been here since uh, the opening in uh, 2010. And I've been working other prisons before that also. It's not for, for the prison to... That's not hard to understand. To judge or to punish, because the police catch the guy, goes to the court and, the, and it gets sentenced perhaps, and then it comes to prison with that. We have to interact and be human. It's, I think it's as simple as that. It really is, because we can, we can create walls between us, but that doesn't help anything. We have to communicate, we have to interact. Without approaching uh -oh. people with respect <laughs> and dignity, it's impossible to sit down the next day and talk about his future. Look. Because he will not oh, have shit. any trust in me. Look, it's a real thing, all right? I mean, it is what it is, I don't care. I mean, it's a, it's a real thing. You gotta feel that. Because I was not only there just to protect the employees or the... Um, I was not just there to protect the employees, or the visitors or anything like that. I was also there to protect the patients and to make sure that the patients were okay, right? I cared also about patient rights. I cared about the employees' rights. I cared about the visitors' rights. It's hard to have compassion. And you can give me this whole thing of, you know, well, as a police officer, you don't know what you see every day and the things that you see desensitizes you. And so, therefore, you don't have that compassion and blah, 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 blah. You know, I've seen people pass away. I've watched a person completely bleed out whenever I worked in the ERs, okay? Whenever I worked there, I've watched a person bleed out just and just stood there, and there's nothing I could do about it. I had to just watch them bleed out and completely pass away, okay? There's a lot of things that I've experienced, a lot of things that I've had to go through, a lot of things that, from a very young age, experiencing death and trauma and pretty much experiencing trauma and, and death throughout my life and then working with psychiatric people and working in security at a at a psychiatric hospital but also being state certified you know carrying a firearm wearing a bulletproof vest and the whole nine yards training with law enforcement training with the sheriff's offices training with um the local police departments doing different things and then also still going and being incarcerated. I have a lot of respect for police, but I also have a lot of respect for, for inmates. I have a lot of respect for people who have done longer time for me, longer, that have done longer time than me, that have been there for a lot longer. And I feel like, yeah, we would have a lot less reincarceration if we had more compassion. And if it ever came up to the point, I'm dead serious, and I've been dead serious about this since the, since the day it happened, 
if it ever came up to the point where I'm able to get um, to get this felony, to get my record um, completely pardoned, which is pretty hard to do, I'd probably still go and try and be a police officer. I really would. I love these people. I really do. I love I love this. It really is good. So you know, work well with reintegration and future planning, etc. There has to be, you know, a foundation there of trust between the staff and the inmates. That's hard though. I Building that trust is a hard. Lot of prisons in the United States as well and somehow I don't have the same kind of feeling of, you know, relief of, no, getting you don't. of an impressive environment that I that I've experienced coming out of those prisons. Mm -hmm. I think that says something about Hold up. So is that the outside of the prison? Is that the outside of what it looks like? Because if that's so, then the outside looks like a full blown prison. I mean I would see that from the outside and be like, yeah, that's a prison. Obviously it is a prison. But what I'm saying is I wouldn't think that going in there that it would be, and I don't want to say luxury, but be of that quality, to be of that, that scale. How different the environment is here. I think uh, I have big opportunities here to, to prepare myself for, for the life uh, after uh, prison. So there, there is still hope. There is still opportunities, you know, to, to get a get a good life after uh, getting out. So, yeah. Yeah. That is awesome. That is awesome. Well, I'm sure this video is already long enough, and you've heard me talk long enough. So, I hope to continue making videos. If you liked this. Hit the like button, obviously. If you would, hit the subscribe button, obviously. Every video you watch is going to be telling you to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button, so of course I'm going to have to, too. But let me know what you think, and let me know your comments, especially if you're from this area and this part of the world. I would love to know more about it, especially just the difference. You know, it's, it's incredible, and I feel like we need more of this. It would be a, a life-changing I mean, it is life-changing, but it would be something even more that that we could benefit from here in the United States. So, anyways, it's me, Bryson P., like always. Have a good day, have a good night, whichever time it is when you're watching this. You're awesome. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.